Last month, the NewsHour brought you a series of stories looking at the future of work, including a report in which economics correspondent Paul Salman explored the seeming contradiction between the fear of job loss due to the rise of driverless trucks and the current shortage of truck drivers in America. Tonight, Paul takes a closer look at the life of one of those drivers and the state of his profession. It's part of his weekly series on economics making sense. So now, when did you first start driving? 1981. You were how old? 21. And why? Why? Oh. A man whose job may or may not be threatened by technology, long-haul truck driver Finn Murphy. I was at Colby College. Right. And uh, up in Maine. Waterville, Maine. And then I'd come back to Connecticut in the summers and I'd work for Callahan Brothers Moving and Storage. I took a road trip with a driver, my first ride in a big truck, and it was amazing. Over the George Washington Bridge in a big truck, down Route 13 through Delaware, Chesapeake Bay Bridge Tunnel into Virginia Beach. I had never been in the South before. I was seduced by it. I loved it. And that's when I decided I wasn't going to finish college. And so Murphy got his commercial license and his career as a truck driver and professional mover of high-priced home furnishings. He's distilled the experience into a memoir, The Long Haul, A Trucker's Tales of Life on the Road, describing an odd job for a college kid whose father was a well-known illustrator, the cartoonist behind Prince Valiant. After I told him I was leaving college after th completing three years and was going to go work for North American Van Lines, he came down and he handed me a bill for three years of college and three years of rent and said, if this is the path that you choose, then you need to pay me back for the college that you've squandered. Uh, I never did pay him, and he never did ask me again. But what drove a Colby kid from a literacy-laden family, Brother Cullen is editor-at-large of Vanity Fair, to hit the highways? It can't just be the allure of the road, I mean. Well, it was the work, too. Moving people's stuff is very fun and complicated and hard. I enjoyed the camaraderie of working with a group of men. I mean, that's how human beings lived for, you know, 100,000 years. We all lived in small societies and we all did manual labor. And we all did it with, uh, you know, our, our brothers. But there was a long period of time when you did not drive, right? Correct. So I drove for 10 years in the 80s, and then I drove, I've been driving since 2009, so another, this 10 years now. So I've had two stints of 10 years. And 20 years in between. And 20 years in between. In those two decades, he and his wife started a successful cashmere importing business, and Murphy became a city councilman in Nantucket. That life fell apart when his marriage did, so he dusted off his commercial driver's license and got back on the road. See, the, the, the thing is, when you're a long-haul driver, you get to leave a whole bunch of stuff behind you. You know, when I climb up into the truck and I turn on this engine and I know I'm going to be gone for four months, I don't have to think about things. And there's a lot of guys like me out there that, you know, are running away from situations or bankruptcy or bad relationships or many things. This is a great way to be out on the lam and still get paid. Driving again and helping move people and their possessions around the country, Murphy salvaged a sense of purpose. And I was making a ton of money because all I was doing was high-end executive relocation. So I'm moving all these rich execs. How much were you making a year? How much do you make a year? Well, I, if I work 50 weeks a year, I can make a couple hundred grand. But that's the absolute high end of It's the high end of trucking. trucking. It's the high end of trucking. A furniture mover who's doing corporate relocation is going to be the high end, yeah. But what does a typical trucker make? You know, I think the average is about, you know, thirty-six to $40,000 a year. And that's for a guy who's getting paid by the mile. He could be gone for months at a time. This isn't a you know a highly skilled or a highly paying job at all. So I you know I read The Economist every week. I'm probably the only long haul driver who reads The Economist every week. And this is a conundrum right now in today's labor market, which is yes. you know we're at 3.9 percent unemployment, but but wages are stagnant. Indeed, wages have barely kept up with inflation in the past year. For truckers, as for so many in jobs that aren't highly skilled, they've fared far worse for decades. You know, compared to what this industry paid in the 1970s, 
we're, we're way behind the eight ball because this was a solid middle class job back then, even into the 1980s. And now it's a poverty profession. And why was it so well paying back then? It was unionized and you had freight rates, you had a regulated freight market that was regulated by the federal government, just like the airlines. This all happened in the Motor Carrier Act of 1935 with FDR, because all the trucking companies were going out of business. And this is when he propped up prices. Exactly. He did it with the airlines, he did it with the trucking business, he did it with the railroads. And that's why these were middle class jobs, because you had the management and unions working together because the prices were fixed. And then that was deregulated first under Jimmy Carter, at least the airlines were. Yes. Started with Jimmy Carter and trucking and it ended, that was finished up by Ronald Reagan. But of course that means it's cheaper for the consumer, right? It was a great consumer benefit. Freight rates fell almost overnight. And this is the question. This is the question that everybody needs to ask as a citizen of any place, which is how much money do you want to save at the expense of good jobs, community character, you know, we all have our $9 sneakers from Walmart now, that's great, but in order to get those $9 sneakers, we had to export all of our manufacturing. So now we don't have good jobs, but we have $9 sneakers. Is that a good trade-off? My opinion, no. Well, a lot of Americans seem to agree with you. I mean, that is a lot of the impetus behind Donald Trump's Make America Great Again, right? It is. and. Uh, you know, I certainly wouldn't want to be cast into the Trump camp, and I don't care who knows it, but, you know, 250 million people have been taken out of poverty in the last 30 years in the Far East and in other places, and a lot of that has to do with free trade and, and the decisions that countries like the United States have made, and I think, I think that's great, but you know, we need to keep our eye on the ball about, you know, our own people and you know the middle class has been hollowed out in the United States certainly in the trucking business and I'm not an expert on anything else but this is not a middle class job anymore well it's a middle class job for somebody like you it's I mean, an upper class upper. job for somebody like me yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> well it, it's an upper class income it's still not an upper class job for the PBS news hour this is economics correspondent Paul Salman out on the road